AMD is an interesting stock to consider for long-term investors. The company operates in the data centers optimized for artificial intelligence, but it has nowhere near the market share of NVIDIA and is not expected to generate any more than roughly 10% market share in that industry. However, AMD also operates in the personal computer and gaming industry, which are not doing as well for this company. Overall, investors are curious about AMD stock. So in this video, I'll answer where I think AMD stock stands using a discounted cash flow valuation method. And this is one of those interesting examples where my discounted cash flow estimate for AMD stock differs considerably from its current market price. And I like to use these situations as learning experiences because of the big differences. We can identify what's causing those differences. Why are our discounted cash flow, or I should say my discounted cash flow valuations, so different from the current market price? And does that open an opportunity or is that reason for further research? So let's take a look here. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so to make this discounted cash flow valuation estimate, I need several assumptions and numbers to incorporate into my valuation model. And I'm going to share with you precisely where I'm getting the numbers, the adjustments I'm making and my reasoning for the adjustments so that you can tell whether the numbers I'm using are too optimistic, right on point or too pessimistic. I'll share with you everywhere and everything I'm getting and so to have full transparency and you can see and make your own uh, estimates as to what you think the stock might be worth. So the first thing is the stock price currently at $170 per share. The free cash flow, latest estimate of 1.357 billion, or I should say the latest reported number 1.357 billion. I've also highlighted the high watermark for AMD's free cash flow of 3.4 billion. I'm going to share with you why this number is important when I uh, share with you my valuation model. But you can see here AMD's free cash flow is down significantly from the peak. However, it's likely to rebound in the near term because of those factors I highlighted. Uh, the industries that it's operating in are rebounding, especially the personal computing industry is expected to rebound late in 2024, early 2025, and peak around 2026 because of the replacement cycle. AMD has 1.637 billion diluted shares outstanding. I'm going to use this number as well. And then AMD has a total long-term debt of 1.719 billion. The company's market capitalization is 275 billion. And it has cash and equivalents of 4.1 billion on its balance sheet. The analysts on Wall Street that are following AMD stock, they expect it will grow its earnings per share at roughly 33% per year over the next five years. And AMD's current beta stands at 1.7. I'm going to adjust this beta downward to 1.25 to account for the company's uh, comparative risk profile. Intel has a beta of one. I don't think AMD is 70% more risky than Intel at this point. In fact, I would argue that Intel is more risky than AMD, but I'm not going to make that large of an adjustment downward for AMD's beta. I'm just going to adjust it downward from 1.7 down to 1.25. All right, so now that we have accounted for all of the numbers and estimates I'm going to be using in this free cash flow model, we can start to look at the prices. All right, so starting with the free cash flow for 2024, I got this number, the 1.357 billion number of the most recent update, not the high watermark. Then I forecasted the company's free cash flows over the next 10 years. I used two different growth rates to estimate free cash flows over the next 10 years. I used the short run growth rate from Yahoo Finance of the analysts on Wall Street that are following the company. Their expected EPS growth rate for AMD stock was start roughly 
I use that as the growth rate for the free cash flows estimated over the next five years. Then I apply the transition period where the company's growth rate slows down to half of where it was in the short run growth rate, which is half of the 32.89. I have it at 16.45 for the next five years. Then I have the company settling down to its longer term growth rate of 5%. Now, as always, when we're forecasting cash flows into the future, we need to discount those cash flows because money in the future is not worth the same to us as money in our pockets today for several reasons. If you have $100 in your pocket today, you can go put that money in the bank account and earn a rate of return on that. So for that reason, you'd rather have the money in your pocket today. Another reason, money in your pocket today is already in your pocket. There is no risk to that money in your pocket. When we're estimating cash flow in the future, there's a risk that cash flow is much lower than what you're expecting or that you don't receive that cash flow at all. So you need to discount those future cash flows for that reason as well. So for a number of reasons, we're discounting the cash flows we're going to get in the future. And the discount rate we're using is called the weighted average cost of capital. And to arrive at this calculation, you combine the average of the company's cost of debt and its cost of equity and the different proportions of debt and equity and come up with the weighted average cost of capital. For AMD, I arrived at a cost of debt of 7.5%. To get there, I took the risk-free rate of 4% and I adjusted it upward 350 basis points to account for the extra riskiness of investing in the debt of AMD versus US government bonds of 10 year duration. Then I calculated the cost of equity using the market risk premium of 6%, risk-free rate of 4%, a beta of 1.25, and that gave me a capital asset pricing model cost of equity of 11.5%. I estimated the company's debt to equity as 25% debt and 75% equity, even though the company's current capitalization is much more heavily weighted towards equity. The ideal way to calculate the mix between debt and equity is to find the company's target debt to equity mix. Now, I wasn't able to find that for AMD, so this is an estimate I made up. 2575 is a reasonable estimate for uh, companies of the size of AMD. And at maturity, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the mix that AMD would prefer to have. Remember, the cost of debt is usually lower than the cost of equity. So businesses would prefer to have a little more debt balance compared to equity in their capital structure. But they have to be careful because when you take on too much debt, the cost of debt rises exponentially. So there's calculations to be made to find that point that minimizes the weighted average cost of capital. And undoubtedly, companies like AMD employ financial experts that help the company achieve those targeted, minimized weighted average costs of capital because they know that's what Wall Street is utilizing to determine the discount rate for the company. All right, so when we... When we derive those discounted present values of the company's cash flows, we find that those are worth $32.23 billion. But then, instead of forecasting these free cash flows all the way out to eternity, what we can do is derive a terminal value at some point in time. And I chose to derive the terminal value at the year 2024 of $229 billion. Now, this collects all of the free cash flows that's expected from AMD between the year 2035 and eternity, and it collects it all in one year. Then we need to discount this number back to today, back to 2024, and we apply that weighted average cost of capital to discount this 229 billion down to this 84 billion today. As you can see, it's the value here in 2020, 2034, discounted back by 10 years using the weighted average cost of capital. So that brings us to the value of operations at 116.9 billion. Now to that total, we need to add the company's cash and subtract the debt, which gives us the value of equity of 119 billion for AMD. Then we divide that value of equity by the number of shares outstanding, which stood at 1.637 billion, 
to arrive at the intrinsic value per share for AMD stock of $72.89. And you can see that's a big difference from the $170 current share price. And I highlighted that I like when I get values that are this different because it, it invokes question asking. It starts me to thinking, why is my valuation this much different from the market price? It's overvalued by $100 per share? I don't think so. I have AMD stock rated as a buy. In fact, I have it rated as one of my top stocks to buy. But one of the tools that I use to evaluate AMD stock gives me a valuation that's much lower than the current market price. Well, one of the reasons could be the free cash flow estimate that I'm using. Now, I use the free cash flow of the latest number. Wall Street could be using AMD's free cash flow at the high water mark of 3.4 billion. And we can see if I update that here to 3.4, that brings my valuation all the way up to $180 per share. And so that alone accounts for that big variation between my estimate for AMD's intrinsic value per share and the market price of AMD's value right now. It's $170. This intrinsic cash flow valuation would bring it to $180 per share. Overall, this should just be one element of a comprehensive analysis of AMD stock to make a decision whether or not to buy or sell. And this particular estimate should be for entertainment purposes only. Do your own due diligence and come up with your own conclusions on what you think the stock is worth today. Hey everyone, I'm excited to announce that my book is finally available for sale. I've been working on it for more than a year now, so I'm really excited to finally share this with you now. It goes through my framework for evaluating stocks. Some of you often ask why I like this stock or why I like the other stock. And this framework provides you the things that I look at when I'm evaluating stocks. I've added the link in the description below.